are here. We have made it. And I'm going to start off with some announcements. The first announcement is that uh, I'm here with my two buddies, uh, Danger Penguin and Zill. What's up? Howdy. Glad to be here. All right, Zill, you have a new handle. I do. So I what, do have a what, new handle. Why don't we talk about that? I'm real proud of it. I have, I have two, two announcements, actually, in particular. One is uh, I have a new summoner name. Uh, this is common for me. Like my friends and I would always compete with each other to like change summoner names and come up with one that was kind of like punny and with a champion. And so the new summoner name is Mentally Zill, like mentally ill. Yeah. Brazilian. Yeah. So this uh, came about backstory when uh, we were playing with some rando, and the guy links his stream, and we're all like. Yeah, let's go to this guy's stream. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah. And the guy is like a, I would say, non native English speaker. He's from Probably. Mexico City. Yeah. Oh, is that what he said? I didn't yeah. get in there. I just yeah, knew that there was, there was a pretty thick accent. And the guy's like. Playing in, on an A. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's on an A. He's like loading screen. And then the first thing he says was 1.7 million master reports a zillion? This guy is mentally ill. What is wrong with this guy? You know, and could not get over it. And uh, then, you know, he, he kept saying mentally ill. And then Zill was like, mentally Zill. And then he, he <laughs> <laughs> and we're all like, oh, okay. All right. That dad joke stuck. And now it's a name. So the it brain, may not be permanent. I have a tendency to change these things, but right now it's the best one I've I, ever. I, I like it. It's good. You should keep it for at least a while. Penguin, welcome back, buddy. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm here in all of my glory. All right. So I have been asking pretty solidly for reviews on the podcast because, I, like I said, I talked to Aiden at, at League Cast, and Aiden was like, "Yeah, the way you climb the ranks is you like." get your reviews out and that's really the like number one factor which i always thought reviews were kind of useless i asked for them because i thought it would make us climb on apple's list but it doesn't seem to and i don't know you know whatever but then aiden's like yeah man our reviews are like the number one driver of like all these metrics and i was like oh holy shit like maybe we really just do need more reviews so we you know, trend higher on like iTunes and blah, 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 and all that. Yeah. Even though it's Spotify. I don't know if you can't even leave reviews in Spotify. I'm not a Spotify guy. But like, I assume so. I hope so. I listen on Spotify, but I haven't. I, I haven't listen to music, reviews. yeah. I, I've never listened yeah. to podcasts. But. So if you guys could review us, that would be great. And there's a couple that we've got that are not like formal reviews. They're just in the form of YouTube comments and uh, people DMing me in league <laughs> that I want to share because I, they're review worthy, right? Uh, yeah. If you so, leave comments or reviews, we will read them. I will read them. And I these are two that I particularly enjoyed that I thought were threshold. These should be actual legit reviews on the podcast. So... Keep in mind, I'm sharing... The, well, first off, I'm going to read a legit review that I missed, and then we'll go from there, right? Because I always read all the real ones. So this one is real. Here we go. Is this <clears> one <throat> from Malaysia, by the way? No, no. We don't have any Malaysian reviews. <laughs> Even though we're like... Even though we're like number... Podcast, well, we're number like 63, supposedly, overall, which I think means that there are 63 podcasts in Malaysia. So, but yeah, incredibly popular. Anyway, uh, national <laughs> heroes in Malaysia. Okay, here's the review by Tony one four seven six seven three seven eight four. Time passer. Uh, that's that's <laughs> an exciting. Story. Yeah, this is the title. <laughs> is time passer? Like, thanks, Thank buddy. You couldn't uh, spruce that up a bit? I mean, it's five stars. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth, but Jesus Christ. Like, <laughs> fucking time pass? Okay, whatever. Here we go. Although I recently listening to Lola podcast. that That's the first sentence. Although I recently listening to Lola podcast. I'm a bit late, like 200 plus episodes. 
I've been listening to it while at work to make my time pass. These guys are a bit weird, but fun to listen. Aww. No, yeah. no. Those are two sentences. These guys are a bit, period. Weird, weird. and fun to listen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, they hop off topic, but that's what's unique about them. Most. Topics are relatable. Although I just got into Silver 4 with Diana Midmain. Although I recommend try to talk about each champion similar to Highlight. But go with your builds, your runes, what you use. I want to try sitting in on the ARAM tourney, but I'm always at work. Since I'm in Cali, it's a bit of a time difference overall. Bunch of goofballs. Oh, I think, yeah. I think that's right up there with one of I, the best reviews we've received. I mean, that's great. Aside from like the, you know, horrific uh, syntax Copy errors, a bit, you know, be a great writer. It yeah. Okay. Aside okay. from that, this guy nailed us pretty good. We we are a time goofballs. passer, and goofballs was accurate. I think you, that should literally be. It should be goofballs who will pass your time. Listen to the Lola podcast right there. There it is. Okay, so that's a real review. So now that I've read that. I'm going to go into some of the other reviews we've got. So, as you guys may have remembered, uh, Endeavorit, who was just on our show last week, or week before, I don't know, right around in that week before, um, just hit Diamond. Good for him. We had him on. He talked about it. Uh, overall, people seem to like him. We got some positive comments. Uh, and then I got this comment from a, uh, from a YouTube listener. Okay. And hold on, I'm going to pull it up. But So I'm going to tell the other story. I'm going to pull up the actual YouTube comment first. Yeah, we want this so verbatim. I want it verbatim if I'm going to read it out. Like, you know, it only makes sense. So, okay, so the other one, I was, I was talking to somebody on League, and they said to me, uh, hey, uh, the TFT episode started off really good, but I couldn't listen to it. And I'm like, what? What do you mean you couldn't listen to it? And he's like, well, I mean, it was good, except the one guy. And I was like, the one guy? What are you talking about? And they're like, yeah, his voice was like uh, Big Bird. And I'm like, what? Whose voice was like Big Bird? <laughs> and now I was like, you've got to tell me. I have to know. Whose yeah, like, voice who is, is this? Who is, it? who is it? Who is it that you think their voice sounds like Big Bird? And... Uh, <laughs> They go back, and they're like, hold on, I have to listen to it, I'll get you a name. They go back, they listen to it again, and they're like, Hashishin, that guy's voice, he sounds like Big Bird. But, like, not just like Big Bird, like like a rapey Big Bird. Awesome. And I was like, like awesome. a rapey yeah. Big Bird. That's, wow. Okay. So I told Hash this. Pulling no punches. Is no, I, I made sure I told Hash. I was like, yeah, oh. Yeah, by the way, buddy, you got some feedback. Because we all get negative reviews. Like, we all get that. Um, people do that all the time. Mine are generally like, I hate him. He's an asshole. Right? Like, okay. I mean, I guess I'm not for everybody, so cool. That's fine. Whatever. But, like, generally it's not, like, as creatively cutting as everybody else seems to evoke right like nobody's ever referred to me as rapey big bird before so i thought you know i i, don't, I got curious as to what that may sound like so i went and listened to some sesame street clips just so i could hear like hey guys you know like big bird voice we're gonna uh, have a awful. sleepover Oh, yeah, and I'm like, with the letter X. Like, with the letter X and two more letter X's. Because it's going to get triple extreme in this bitch. <laughs> that was like Woody Woodpecker gone raping. <laughs> anyway. They're all birds. It's kind yeah, they're all bad. It's, yeah, they're real similar. Real similar. Yeah. So there was that. And I was like, "All right, that's you know, that's pretty good negative feedback." Ponderous got a ton of really great negative feedback in terms of like he evoked hatred in people, like extreme, severe dislike. Like, and we we've we've been over all that like a hundred times with all the like ponderous comments. Like, if I wanted to hear a five year old shit on league all day, I'd go do <laughs> blah blah blah. And I'm like, whoa, but. So, like, Ponderous is, always seems to get really extreme comments, and uh, 
you know, Ernie used to get a whole bunch because he would eat during the podcast. Like he would eat oh, that's like true. soup. I remember that during the podcast, and people would soup, get something. You got to slurp. Oh, it was always like Ernie. What do you think? Oh, <laughs> uh, what? They're like Ernie. What the fuck are you eating? Or it'd be like <laughs> chips. You know, like something that was crunchy, and I'm like, we are recording fucking audio, Ernie. Like, this is not a time to do this. And he's like, I'm hungry. We're like, mm. people used to really hate that. But, yeah. And Sam never got a negative review, as far as I can remember. Everybody loves yeah, no, Sam. No, that's just everybody not. That's, Sam. Yeah, yeah, everybody loves Sam. be like the devil himself to do something like right. that. Right. So. So, but then, so Endeavor, it, you know, as I always said, you're not podcast material unless you get some sort of hating, scathing, negative review at some point. You got to evoke emotions in people, right? Endeavor, it gets this review. Stu's replay one week ago. Endeavor, it looks like he's wearing a mask for when the purge occurs next week. <laughs> <laughs> As in they said that about his face? Yeah, about his fucking face. <laughs> Jesus. Because, because his, his, his video kept, like, not focusing. And he does look like he has, like, a bit of a serial killer face in, like, the video. Because it's, like... Okay. The, the video screen is not focusing and it makes his features look kind of plastic. So, like, okay. I may end up just sending him a webcam with some Patreon money just to relieve this yeah, issue. Let's fix the purge face. Well, I'd rather be a purge face than a slimy Pac-Man. Well, no, you were, face, you were so. Buttercam. <laughs> you know, old Butterface Danger Penguin over here with his uh, out-of-focus Buttercam. I can uh, see your face now. You have the lights on in your house. Which yeah, is, that's, yeah, that's that's how I'm, I'm trying to get more viewers, you know. I see. Put this front and center. <laughs> yeah, Danger Penguin After Dark didn't turn out super well. <laughs> it wasn't popular. <laughs> Turns out it didn't, didn't really have a niche audience. Uh, you know, the, <laughs> you would think it would draw better. But anyway. I, I did. So, uh, yeah, indifferent... Does actually? I mean, it's a fair. I mean, he's not a bad looking, dude. It's but fair criticism because the camera was so shitty, and uh, I've been making fun of him about that like all week. So I have I've derived like no share or like no small share of joy yes, out of that particular comment. Reviews are appreciated. Hate mail is awesome. It's also <laughs> appreciated. I don't even care. Just attach five stars to it. And yeah, and then say whatever you want. Say whatever you want. I'll read it. I don't even care. I don't. I don't even care if it's scathing and about me. I will read it. Like I will make sure it gets done. So, okay, everyone and their dog has been asking me about how I've been doing with Katarina, how things are going, and uh, what you know, what's the status on my mid journey, right? And so I figured I'd give a little status update to let everybody kind of know what what's the happenings. So, I've been playing uh, a metric shit ton of Katarina lately, like just all the time. And I, yeah, like, I don't get mid anymore. Yeah, he doesn't get, he doesn't get mid. Never. So, you know, quality of games has decreased dramatically. Yeah, it's hard for us to win when we're both off roll. Yeah. In the solo lanes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they both really lose. Is. And they both <laughs> lose hard. So, uh, here's the thing, though. I feel as though I have improved massively. Am I, am I, at, like, you guys have played with me. Well, maybe not Penguin as much, but That's Zill, you've I been. I know you've guys. improved massively from when you first started. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I mean, still got a long ways to go. Not saying yeah. that, but like I think I'm finally to the point where I can play Katarina pretty well, but I'm still bad at mid. I think that's fair. Yeah, because uh, I mean, at least a, a couple of the games I played with you, you were you were down in lane, but once we got to roaming and team fighting area, yes. all of a sudden you yes. picked up. Right. Also, yeah, like, oh, I mean that's okay. that's the only time at which I'm impactful in the game, and that's the problem. <laughs> right. So, I. Uh, I mean, that's the only time I'm impactful in the game, but that's not how that should work. Oh, it's also not like my shtick either. So it's yeah, completely fair. out of character for me. So like, I was talking to Endeavor about it, and and he was like, "Yeah, man, I think uh, maybe uh, maybe it's just a champ sucks." 
you know, you don't seem to win any of the matchups and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, fuck, man, maybe he's right. I was like, I wonder how low Katarina is right now on the tier list. Because I thought she was pretty low. You know, because it, he's right. It doesn't seem like I win, like, Yasuo is a counter. Aurelia is a counter. Um, you know, Akali is a counter. Like, all these are... And Talon is like a hard skill matchup, but I think a counter. Maybe I'm just not good enough yet, but whatever. Well, don't worry, I got your Talon counter right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, so maybe, it's like maybe I'm just not good, right? I mean, maybe that's it, or maybe the champion's bad. So I go look her up on uh, like u.gg, which is basically like champion.gg, but I think has better stats. Okay. All right, and she's S plus tier, and fifty three percent win rate, and like diamond plus challenger, and I'm like, cool, with like an eight percent play rate. So she is real strong right now. So it's not that, and it, <laughs> it's a way to make yourself feel great. Yeah, no, and and Deborah and I were like, what? Oh, oh, well, um, you're like. Racking the stats for like, like redeeming <laughs> information. <laughs> I was like, uh, I wasn't doing an NA right now. You know? <laughs> like, well, um, I thought I was gonna get something like, oh yeah, she's like straight hard B tier, man. You're making your life harder by playing that Katarina shit. <laughs> I look it up and it's like S plus. Mm. Mm. Okay. Fuck me. Okay. Uh, so. I got to thinking about it, and that kind of opened my eyes up because I, I guess I was making an excuse for myself that I thought I was in a weaker champion than I was. And I got to thinking about it, and I was like, well, then I'm doing shit wrong, right? right. And so what do I need to analyze to improve, and like, how am I going to do that, right? Because I know a lot of you out there that are listening uh, often ask and think these problems, like, what am I going to do differently? Like, how do I improve myself? What do I need to focus on? And for me, a lot of my problem is that I wasn't cleanly executing my combos. Like I would look at Cat Evolved or any other high elo Katarina player, and I'm like, I'm not that fast. Yeah. In the shit I'm doing, I'm like not even close to that fast. Right? Like I am not Shunpo and then using uh, my activatable items like my Hextech Gunblade and then W and then alt and you know or actually w ignite alt i'm not doing all that in like that fast mm -hmm. right so because of that i'm letting people escape and do things or i'm fucking it up mechanically and like i'll hit my buttons out of order and alt for a quarter of a second whoops that's real efficient. You know, or like I keep letting people live by like one auto attack or one tick of damage and it's mm -hmm. because I'm not clean enough. Yeah. Right? And so that has been a continuous problem for me. And I thought, okay, so I need to work on mechanics. So just today I went into the practice tool. I set up three Teemos, turned off cool down, or t you know, Teemo training dummies, right? Turned off minions. I turned off cooldowns and sat and practiced my combo buttons with Hextech and with uh, and with Ignite. So until I could execute that like ten times cleanly in a row, I didn't stop. Awesome. And now I can, or at least I can until I think about it, and then I'll fuck it up next time. It's kind of like Guitar Hero. You get in there like, -da 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 -da, and then you go to play the song, and it's like. And the crowd starts booing because you didn't hit it like you did the 800 times in practice. Right. Uh, so hopefully I can do that. So that was one thing that I focused on that I thought would be a hard, um, you know, like a hard uh, improvement area for me, right? Because yeah. I wasn't clean enough and I need to be better, particularly if I'm going to play an assassin because it's really about anytime you play an assassin, it's about getting that edge and then exploiting it over and over and over again. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that was one thing. The second thing was I was not pressuring lane enough. 
And I knew that. It felt like every matchup I was in, I would just chalk it up as a loss and like farm at max range and, yeah, and forfeit a ton of CS. Yeah. And it didn't matter who I was playing against. I mean, there are some that you're not going to be able to do shit against, like Malzahar. You know, like, okay. So Love he he clears waves and I, I throw a dagger. Guy. You know. Uh, so... Me and Mal's go way back. Yeah, he would. Anyway, uh, so I just I mean, don't do anything. I just, just fall asleep with my keyboard. It's great. Did, did I give it space aids? Okay, I could take a nap. So, anyway, uh, you know, there are some champions where you really can't do much of anything. Like at six, Malzahar beats you. Prior to six, Malzahar beats you. So, okay. I mean, that's... Andy pushes Without super even hard. Trying. Yeah, Andy pushes super hard. Don't forget that. So, I get it. You know, there are certain matchups that are bad. I wasn't taking advantage of those. I didn't know the matchups well. I didn't know where I was strong in those matchups. So, I started looking up those individual matchups that I was having problems with. And seeing how they were played at, like, a higher level. And as I've come to understand kind of where those, like, power spikes actually are that's been really helpful and I think actually it's going to make me a more impactful laner and after I did that I was noticing that I actually was getting kill leads in lane Nice. so maybe that will change and I'll butt crush more and that would be fantastic because that's what I need to do to, to, to climb but I was playing with the tag end a little bit like, we were duo queuing on my Smurf account. My Smurf account, which is, like, low silver and tag, is now gold, but he was silver one. Um, so I was playing in Good silver. Yeah, awesome. no, he got it. And, yeah, that's great. by the way, it wasn't me carrying him in his series. I played yeah, one no, game no, no, with no. him, and then he did the others. So he, he carried it. No, I hadn't followed up with tag in a while. That's yeah, cool. man, he did it. He got to gold this season on his own. So A lot of the guys cool. that have been, you know, like, silver in the past are up in gold. You know, like I know uh, Genso's got up to gold this season too. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so I mean, cool. yeah, the, still, you can still advance even when you're in your old age and been playing the game for a while. Yeah. Oh man, I, I was real worried about that <laughs> for a minute. I just got to plat, by the way. That's uh, so. Congrats. Uh, yeah, man. I uh, I was real worried about it for a while because like I got to plat promos real fast early on in the season. And then I failed them, and I was like, oh, no big deal, right? I'll just climb right back up there. And then I got down to, like, gold three, zero LP. Like, I just had a really, really bad loss streak. I think that's when we were hanging out with Tycho. I think I just kind of, like, absorbed that loss streak uh, <laughs> f- from him. And anyway, yeah, like, it really spooked me. So I was like, I'm not going to I'm not gonna do this for a little while. And so I would just play a game of ranked, like, I think I was playing one game a week. Like, I was, that's, that's where I was at. And if I won, great. If I didn't, whatever, I just forget about it. And then, yeah, I've been kind of hovering around the gold gold one area, and then I just kind of made the last push for it, which was really nice um, this week. I, um, I realized it, this is kind of a, you know, because I, I was trying to learn a different champion, right? I was trying to learn Vlad. I didn't take that into ranked just yet, but I was trying to, like, switch it up from Zill all the time because Zill wasn't working, um, and the reason Zillion wasn't working, like, I, I know, like, blaming it on your team is cliche, but I felt like it didn't matter how much help I gave them, they didn't know what to do with it, and it wasn't necessarily, like, super their fault, I'm kind of, like, spoiled by playing with our community, right, and, like, everyone knows <laughs> how to play Zillion, everyone knows how to play with my Zillion, because I fucking tell them, and I yell yeah. at them if they don't do it right, um, you know, but like playing in ranked with people who see a zillion once in a blue moon, you know, they get sped up or they see a double bomb and they don't really know that like now's the time to make magic happen. And so I could like do stuff, but it, it didn't matter if nobody followed up. Mm-hmm. And so I realized that at some point I just have to play a champion that can kill people. Like at some point I just need everyone dead in order to actually win the game. And so, um, I don't know. I started pulling out Vigar and Malzahar a little more, and that quickly changed things. Vigar can kill people pretty quick. I, I think Vigar it, can fucking kill people. If you yeah. need people dead, Vigar's a great choice. And I'm very happy with that. I think so. you're right in that. 
it, it's it's always tough to blame teammates, but when you're playing a unique champion like Zill, who yeah. you do not see often, like when we play together, you're like, I got you, I got you, I got you. And so I know I can stay in there, I can fight, and you're about to ult me. But right. when you're playing with a random, you never trust your randoms, right? So no. then they back out just as you ult, <laughs> they have just flashed away, so your ult does nothing. Now they come in on you and kill you. Like that, yeah. I, it, it's it's not good to to blame your teammates. I, I do my best to avoid that, and I think um, uh, it just wasn't working. We weren't right. on the same page, and it's tough to get on the same page in solo and duo queue, right? It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a random person that you'll never team with again, and it's tough to tell them, "Hey, I got you. I got your speed. I got your help. You know, you're carrying us right now. I'm going to use my ult on you. You know, like." Stay in there, mix yeah. it up. When you come back to life, I'm gonna double bomb them, and then you're gonna slaughter them all. Right? That's what you say in chat, you know, like in your, you know, like in your head. But unfortunately, yeah. they don't see that. They're like, uh, this zil, this zil is too far away. There's no way. Even though you'll flash ult someone, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, um, uh, out of curiosity, not to interrupt your train of thought too hard, but I'm gonna interrupt your train of thought super hard. Okay. Um, did I ever send you that new camera we talked about? <coughs> Me? Yeah. Yeah. You need to like auto focus that thing. No. Yeah. I, I, you I look like, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah, you look like a five <laughs> pixel version of yourself right now. That's like, uh, what was the guy on uh, it, it, Ghost it, in the I, Shell that had like the thing over his face? It might be my computer, but it also might be yours because you are all pixeled up. You actually are pixelated all the What? Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it might no. be your computer. Pixelating me, not me being pixelated. All right, well, good. Camera. At least it's not the camera, because I was super concerned. I'm like, did I send him like a shit camera, and it's no, not even working? Good. Your, is, your computer's um, just shit. Is his face just I've like, inherently I've never uncapturable? Seen face this clear. Yeah. His teeth are yeah. way wider than I realized. Yeah. And his hair part is way cleaner. Yeah, yeah. his, his like, teeth actually cause glare on the camera. It's, he looks it's, fine. He's um, handsome as fuck. Really? But I also wanted to bring up another point from Blake, and when he was uh, talking about how he just assumed Katarina was shit tier, right, because he wasn't able to win in lane. Um, I think that a lot of our community, a lot of people who play League, fall into that caveat. Not necessarily that particular one, but it's things out of my control that make it so that I can't do well, right? You recognize that maybe it is something in my control and you started working on some of those things and i think it's mm -hmm. i think that's a very healthy mental to go go forward with so if you're like oh i always get a lead in lane but my adc is an idiot so it never matters right that's you're never going to climb with that attitude because it there are always going to be monkey teammates that don't do what you want them to do and you can always climb if you're good enough Right. That's that, that's just what it boils down to is and if you're not if you're not climbing on a certain champ or with a certain skill set, then there might be something you can do to help yourself climb. You're never going to be able to choose your teammates. But right. I, and that's what I thought of when I when I heard Blake talking about, oh, my champ is just dog shit. Right. And he's not going <laughs> to you can't you can't win with Katarina. No one can. This <laughs> oh, is shit. It's a joke. Well, no, he never <laughs> said that. He's like, man, maybe you should pick somebody who's like higher on the tier list. And I was like. Yeah, maybe I should. I don't know. I was like, but Cat evolved is like challenger with that champion. I was like, and I really like Cat, so maybe, maybe it's just like something that I can improve on. Like if I learn the matchups better, if I learn this or I learn that. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I look it up. I'm like, oh, S tier. Mm. Shit. Yeah. So I mean, but that's a good thing to do. Is it, it, you know, like you, you, you thought about it. You got proven wrong by yourself. Good mm -hmm. job. And then you tackled something that you think will help you improve. Well, and that, I think that's, that's another a really thing. Good is, lesson for people to learn. And, and that, that's another thing I did want to focus on. Like, I could play three million games of Katarina. I could, and I'll learn the ins and outs of all those matchups by trial and error over time. Maybe I'll learn it. Maybe I won't. But instead, I have taken the approach of. Honestly, I think any time you spend watching video, if you study it, not if you watch it to be entertained. Okay? Mm -hmm. so that's an important distinction. If you study the video and you go, okay, why did they do that? 
why did it work how can i emulate that this is how i need to mechanically execute or these are the opportunities i need to look for in order to win this matchup or win this whatever right um then you will improve in leaps and bounds quicker than trying to figure that crap out on your own right like if i leave you in a room long enough and i say hey i want you to do like an impressionist painting of you know lily pads on water or some shit like that that impressionist painters paint and i give you enough paint and enough time eventually you will paint something in the style of impressionism that looks vaguely like lily pads on water that an impressionist painter would do you'll also do a whole bunch of other weird shit that never worked and doesn't look anything like that shit right but think how much faster i could have made that process if i would have shown you what an impressionist painting looks like or if i would have explained impressionism to you and that they're trying to paint quickly before the light changes <laughs> you go oh okay well then i can do that i just turned your uh trial and error period from millions of paintings to hundreds of paintings by doing just those two things, right? Yeah. It's the same thing about learning a champion mid. I could play millions of games. And right now, I was playing this champion so poorly that I thought she sucked, <laughs> right? So if that's the case, how many times am I gonna have to play this champion before I'm like, well, oh, goddamn, she's actually really good and I need to play this way before I figure that shit out, right? Would have been forever. Instead, I'm, I'm actively learning from somebody who's mastered it already, right? There's no reason to reinvent the wheel on this shit. Yep. Like, it makes your life harder to try to just, I'll just play 100,000 games, and no problem. That's I know, what I like to do. Well, I, here's the thing. That's Zell's method. I know watching videos is not as fun as playing the game. <laughs> I know that. I know... Beating up a Teemo shaped practice dummy to make sure your mechanics are cleaner is not fun. Because it's not. I just did it forever. Like, I did it for literally 20 minutes today. It's not fun. But I'm better at what I'm doing now. And if that's the case, that's what I have to put in to get there, right? Like, football players don't just go out and play football, they run and get in shape. They lift weights to get bigger and stronger. They put in hours off the field to be good on the field. You need to do the same thing if you're serious about getting better at league. And a lot of people just want to passively get better and then say, oh, well, you know, I've played 1,000 games, I've played 2,000 games, and I'm just not getting any better. Well, yeah, I went from silver three to silver one in 1,000 games. Holy fuck you could have been miles higher on the chain if you had devoted that practice to, to legitimately improving in important areas. Yeah, and the thing is, like, Blake, because he's done this for a long time, had the self-awareness to, like, you know, he, he I mean, and even so, you, you were self-deceiving. Yeah. You tricked yourself into thinking that the champion was bad, right? Mm -hmm. But you double-checked yourself because you, you know... You need to get data on that, right? And then you did, and then you realize, okay, no, it is me. But like those like steps that <laughs> nope, you took in your mental, I'm ass. Yeah, yeah. 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 But the those ass steps check. that you took are things that you have developed over time as like an adult professionally and as, as an a old person. man. To say yeah. as an old man. As an old man, man okay? We're we're all getting there, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um and I'm just telling you, like, you're if you're a little younger, like your brain doesn't want to do that. It's really hard for even us to do that. So like, please doubt yourself. Yeah, I, I literally, yourself. I have it carved into the handle of my walker. You know, like you are not good at mid. <laughs> and I'm like, oh right, I'm not. I'm not good at mid, so I need to check my shit. But you know, for real though, like ego does play a part and I've got one of those. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm some kind of like altruistic saint on you the You get to have an ego if you check it, Yeah, I think. I but think I mean, fair. Yeah, but realistically, I'm also like, there's like an old saying, 
that I'm going to butcher <coughs> slightly, but it's like the best part of wisdom is admitting what you don't know. Yes. Yes. Okay. I don't know mid. I know I don't know mid. I don't know Katarina. I don't know her matchups. I'm trying to learn them. So I need to get into the mindset of being a student again. You know, I know bot lane. No problem. Yep. You know, mid, I got a lot to learn. And hell, I mean, to be totally honest, I still have shit to learn bot lane, or at least shit to perfect, for sure. Like, I can't think of the last time I went to the training tool and, like, tried to perfect thrush mechanics, because the answer is never, because the <laughs> training tool came out years after I played the shit out of that chain. Yeah, y'all are spoiled. You so, I mean, but for real, though, I did, you know, that is something that you can work on to actually improve but you have to try you don't just like you know uh, like the riot fairy doesn't come into your house looking and fist bump you on each shoulder and be like there you go bro you're diamond i made you a sandwich bro not even a sandwich <laughs> Lazy ass uh, okay so fucking uh fucking um Endeavor it. No, other lawyer. I can't. Oh, double snip. Double yeah, snip. Right. Thank you. Other lawyer, other double, double snip. snip. Yeah, yeah right. comes comes in. He's like, I want you to watch this video. And I'm like, okay, what's this video? And he links it to me. And it's like this kid wearing like a stocking cap, and he's making a sandwich with like ham, some kind of spread, and potato chips on it on like a roll. And then he, he says, hey. And his friend, it's the same kid, but playing a friend, is like on the couch. And he's like, yeah, I made you a sandwich. You what? I made you a sandwich, bro. You did? You made me a sandwich? Yeah, yeah, bro, I made you a sandwich. And it gets so awkward and weird and it's hilarious and it goes on forever. But, it's super wholesome content. Yeah, it's if like you haven't seen it. You should totally watch yeah, it. Yeah, you I keep know we're thinking that it's that are like two months old right now. But yeah, it's yeah, like, you you keep thinking that it's gonna take a turn and it just never does. And then you're like, it's the same, yeah. Oh, okay. Can I take a bite? Yeah, bro. Take a bite. That's fucking delicious. Like, okay, this is great. And like, I don't know where I was going with this. I don't know where you were either. But I had a connection. I just lost it in the acting out of the bro sandwich. But, yeah, basically, um, yeah, bro sandwich yourself some fucking content. <laughs> Eat up the, take a bite of that content. You can, bro. Uh, it's delicious. That's a flawless segue. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea where I was going with right it. Right off the But I brought it back. So... <laughs> So, uh, yeah, to, where we started on this was iTunes reviews. Please, guys, do some iTunes reviews. I'd love to read That'd them. It would really help us out. I want to climb in other markets and see what other strange Besides countries. Malaysia. Yeah, see what other strange countries we can we've max out. We've already dominated you know. Malaysia. So there's, <laughs> yeah, we, there's so much more. We've left our mark in Malaysia. There's antlers on everything down there. So, anyway, cool. So, we've done that. Zill's talked about him, Platt. Penguin is still there. And, uh, yo, what's the next piece of awesome news that Lola uh, Podcast so is coming at you with? Clash is coming out. It's back. Bam! Clash! It's, it, don't forget, it's it's Clash Test, and we okay. see how those go. Okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Clash is supposed to come back, and, yes, we you do. know, <laughs> we'll see if it actually does or if all the servers crash. But, but this Saturday, mm -hmm. Lola is putting together a team of podcasters to compete in Clash. <laughs> Risk. It's going to be me, Penguin, Smurf, Ernie, and I think Endeavorite. Yeah, yeah. it's Endeavorite, yeah. Uh, and, all right. Uh, yeah, Rip, uh, Sea of Thieves, that poor bastard. <laughs> well, okay. He yeah, was originally dude. going to be on the team, but it didn't make sense to have him on the team. Hang because on, hang on. All podcasters? And First, we were going to do just podcasters. That was the Correct. whole goal, right? Yes. And then we, I I invited Ponderous Sea Lion because he's a podcaster and he's also Correct. very good. And I was like, we need to have him play on our team. 
Mm-hmm. And then it was like, honor's too low. You can't invite him. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, well, he, duh. Yeah, he Why rocked, did I even try? Yeah, he yeah, rocked bottom of the other. When the game didn't respect his time, all of a sudden the yeah. other dropped. So. So, so, then, so then, right, I'm like, well, we got plenty of podcasters or people who've been on the podcast, right. you know. We, we've got plenty of people to fill these shoes. Mm-hmm. Double sniffed. Double sniffed. Come on board. So I, I clicked invite, and it said, honor is too low. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. God, we're Double really, we're really got, not that I bad. I a sea lion, right? Oh, yeah. That, like, that was a given. Astros even, right? Yeah. But, like, double sniffed? What's going on? Yeah, that like, one kind of... Are that toxic as a podcast? Yeah, that like, one kind of... What the fuck is going on? We're not that bad with each other. We're really not. We're it's, really not. We're really not. No, so the thing is, I messaged him, right? Because I messaged... I, I wanted to figure out what's going on. I was like, hey, I invited you to Clash. And it said, honor's too low. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, fucking team fight tactics, man. <laughs> no, no, he, no, 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 wait, wait, what he said, what he said was, yeah, man, been playing a lot of team fight tactics yeah, lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went, how the fuck did you get banned in team fight tactics? Like, what the fuck could you have possibly how said? How are you toxic in team yeah. fight tactics? What the fuck is wrong with you? Anyway, it turns out that basically, like, he he had really low honor, and he just didn't play league where you get honor. He played team fight tactics, and so it was like more of a vacuum thing instead of like him actually being toxic. Yeah, I but, my mind went straight to you were yeah. actually toxic in team fight tactics I, enough. To, how do people even report you in that? I, I picture him like pinging constantly just to piss everyone off. <laughs> can you ping in team fight tactics? Uh, I, I think you can, yeah. You, you I can, can you ping. ping, can't you? I mean, the you regular emote. ping, for sure, emote. not the wards. I did the not emotes. know that. The emotes, yeah. Yeah. Well, I know, like, Brad has, like, the, <laughs> the monarch butterfly-looking cat creature, and it does, like, a it jumps its own tail. Oh, yeah. So he does mm. that a lot. Yeah. But I didn't think well, that would be enough to make anybody Brad, mad. I, I invited him to the team, too, and, and uh, it set, he's not ranked. He doesn't play ranked, so yeah. he can't play... So if you if you don't play ranked and if your honor's too low you can't play clash. Which but if you want coincidentally to play clash, killed three members of our starting of lineup. Cast, right? Yeah, yeah, how the fuck does that happen? But That's anyway, true. there you have we it. Ba- we barely were able to like uh, struggle through with, with a roster. And um, somehow Astros, who wasn't toxic enough to get smashed, uh, which by a small miracle I would imagine. Uh, Ends up on somebody else's team because he like set this up beforehand. So mm-hmm. Astros is out. Yeah. So okay. So anyway, we we got our lineup. We're gonna do a little podcast for Clash. If you guys want to play Clash, you should come to the Discord and try to find people. Yeah, There's we have a looking. There. We have a looking have for looking Clash for channel. Yeah, channel. And you should come into that and like try and find people to play Clash if you don't have a team already because it will be really fun. Um, also, we're going to be streaming when we do Clash as a team, mm-hmm. and we're going to be doing some prep and some practice for, like, some special plays, some Lola-specific special plays. Yeah, don't that, tell uh, anybody. We're going to do, no, I can't tell, tell you what they are. <laughs> oh, they're definitely going to be invades. Yeah, that will um, But there's also going to be other special plays that we're going to, like, cook up. And they'll be on the stream for you guys to watch, and then we'll talk about it um, on the next podcast <laughs> oh, episode afterwards. God. Okay, so, so whenever you said we're going to cook up, uh, there is a a quote and I'm not really uh, I can't piece where I know it from I think it may be the Simpsons but he's like they said something he's like yeah he's a cooking something up I don't remember what that's from but it is from something listeners you assume that help me your, your out. mind is just like scrambled with like memes and television yeah no it right is now. like, like I have years worth on? of build up so speaking of uh, of television How's your movie challenge going? Do you have anything? Oh, I have a movie challenge. Um, I'm going to, according to what the listeners voted on in the Twitter poll. Okay, hold on. Background. Zill, like, hasn't watched any movies prior to, like, 2005. Yeah. And so he didn't get, like, any pop culture references. So we decided we were going to have him watch old movies. Just so he old, like, like old like foundational movies. Yeah, right? yeah, like 80s classics. Powerhouses. Yeah, right. Eighties, nineties, like, early two thousands, yeah. Yeah. So like um, classic 
solid films that form like pop culture basis. Yeah, right. Things that most people have for their formative years right. that I didn't. So the movie that was chosen by the community is Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which oddly enough seen. beat Back to the Future. I was surprised about that. I'm surprised about it, but at the same time, they're both excellent, so I can't really... Well, it also beat Major Pain and Wicker Man. We're not talking about Wicker Man again. We really need to. Too much time on the last one. I wish that we had, and I'm disappointed in the community, to be frank. I I think they missed an opportunity here, but go on. You could have plagued me with anything, and you chose a good movie, is what I'm hearing. Uh, Oh, you mean of all those... I put yeah. two good movies and two troll movies in just to see what the community the would do. The two good movies were on the top of the list. And they well, were. That's, that's so nice. Like I, that actually yeah. makes me respect the community more. They, like, value my time. That's I'm disappointed. Well, <laughs> frankly. You know, fuck I, all. Two, yeah. two different viewpoints. Yeah. I, well, here's, so, here's the thing. is I'm kind of hoping it works out this way. I'm kind of hoping that you watch these movies and they don't hold up to the test of time. Like, watching them as an adult without, like... This is something that I enjoyed as a child, yeah. right? Because, like, I watched The Goonies, and this pisses everybody off when I say this, but I watched The Goonies when I was 24 for the first time ever without expectations. Well, actually, I can't say that because everybody told me it was fucking amazing. And yeah. I'm like, okay, The Goonies, let's watch it. And I watched it, I'm like, this movie is shit. Like, terrible to watch this strip away all the nostalgia and you're watching really bad CGI of a not very real story that could never happen and it just sucks right so I kind of wanted to see Zill watch movies like this and hear his like not having watched it as a kid what do you think that would be yeah. or watch something god awful like Wicker Man no, no and just see what he says. Here. Like, yeah, yeah. we're going to go straight right. into what I think of the film. Um, you know, the thing is, I actually know nothing about this movie at all. So what movie than, did you get picked? I don't think we've said it yet. Yeah, yeah, he said this Ferris. Oh, it's Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's the movie that got picked. Yeah, I, I, have, I have no idea what to expect. Um, I know two of the actors in the movie, and that's it. Um, so... Yeah, it's gonna be exciting. I have. I'm gonna try do it on like probably this Sunday, um, and then we'll probably have it on for next podcast. So, so Penguin, this is good. this is my favorite. Uh, we were talking about it, and I was trying to get him to watch it before this. And he's like, "Dude, I haven't had a day off," and I'm like, <laughs> "You you haven't had a, a day off to uh, to watch uh, Ferris Bueller's uh, Day Off, huh? Kind of yeah. missing the whole point of a movie." Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty it's like boring. Completely <laughs> unironic. That was literally my excuse. I actually don't know what it references in the film other than the title. So mm. uh, no, it's 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 kind of the whole like schema of the movie is that it's based around yeah you know, spontaneous choice to just drop all responsibilities for a day. Okay, and and thus you saying that you wouldn't do that to watch the movie was kind of comical. It, uh, given okay, context sure right yeah so. all right <laughs> anyway got it yeah got it yeah so we're there i'm just gonna be made fun of the whole way through cool probably so yeah all right that's excellent. what we're doing i'm down okay cool so take it we'll have in the review give it five stars we'll we'll, go. we'll give him five <laughs> minutes i'll put it on a timer or something and we'll we'll see what he he'll soapbox next episode about uh ferris bueller we'll see where we go from there then i'll do another vote and we'll see uh, what other movies the community wants to hear Zill watch and get his input yeah, on. Yeah, honestly, we'll I mean, the thing is, I, there's a lot of them out there to choose from. I so mean, it's pretty much with stuff. everything from 2005 back. No, ni- 1967 <laughs> to 2005. Oh, right, because he's watched like a bunch of that vintage whole, shit. You know, I, my, yeah. you know what my vote would be for? What? Willow. Really? I just, I think it's like up his alley of like something that he might like. I've I've never heard of that. What is that? And you know what I'm talking about, right? What's yeah, that? yeah. It's yeah. uh, <coughs> it's just the like little a dude one that you watched when you were young. You know? His name is uh, um, oh god, he's like the famous uh short actor, the dwarf actor that's not Tyrion Lannister. Yeah, I, <laughs> um, I got the name off the top of my head. Uh, Peter Dinklage, <laughs> not him. His name is, um, oh, God, he's British. 
what is his damn name? Why can I not come up with this? I can see his face right now. Because he was that. He was like an Ewok in Star Wars. He's friends with like Ricky Gervais. Um, are you Googling this? Right now. Okay, fantastic. Because you're never, you're never going to leave it until... Uh, no, you're right. It would bother me as long as you are 100% correct. to find a fucking answer. So I just, just need to shut so that up. we can move on. Thank you. Um, I appreciate Warwick that. Davis. Warwick Davis! Damn it! That's what it is! Whenever you say Warwick, I knew it immediately. But it's Warwick Davis. Um, and, uh, yeah, he, he plays like a tiny magician. Yeah. It's it, like a fantasy it's movie. Pretty good. Pretty good. Movie. Okay. Or at least it was when I saw it when I was eight. <laughs> right, who right. Knows so, now? Right. Who knows now? And this, so all bets are off with how this shit goes. But, but that's go. my personal <laughs> addition to the Twitter poll. God, you know what movie would be fucking terrible to watch as an adult that you could have watched as a kid and enjoyed? The Land Before Time series, all of them. <gasps> it's so good. <laughs> is it back then <laughs> yeah is it because i had the pizza hut puppets oh yeah everybody had those, those but now badass. not so much i would imagine it does not hold up no i wasn't as, so. as, as many animated films <laughs> <laughs> so uh anyway <laughs> anyway we're gonna that'll be a segment we're gonna do it it's totally unrelated to league but it should be fun so that's kind of our criteria um okay so yeah also, Endeavor it, join the podcast. Welcome, Endeavor it, Purge Face. Because we need rock. a diamond player. Well, a I'll get there again. <laughs> it's just, a, it's a matter of like he's. I I enjoyed his commentary. Uh, people did not hate him, and uh, we were looking for a girl. Well, that's true. It's yeah. a win, win, win. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> I hope he listens to this episode. I doubt he I will. I really do. I doubt he will. But I'm curious to hear what. That kind of came out of left field, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, okay, so we've got like eight minutes left. If we want to talk about literally anything else, do you well, guys have? Anything? I would like to talk a little bit about playoffs. We're Shoot, about playoffs. I'm okay because like I know like there Cloud was the drama in. with TSM imploded, Cloud Nine and Team Liquid. By the way, spoilers. Yeah, spoiler alert. Just, I mean, it's 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 playing in like three days, so sorry, but so if right mm. now you haven't watched, you plan on watching it on VODs, I'm about to talk about NA, EU, LPL, and LCK. All right, so All spoiler right, alert: go. if you've watched any of those, or you want to watch any of them, and you don't want to know what happens. All right. By the way, that's out of the way. I ordered a C9 jersey that says "Why is Papa Smurf today?" Dude, I got a C9 hoodie coming. I'm so excited. See, that's yeah. awesome. Because yeah. I want to watch Worlds in it. Me so I too. decided that's what I was going to do. Yeah. Are you still, still coming down? I, if I get a car, I'll come down and we'll hang Penguin, out. Penguin, where do you live at? I live in Detroit. Or yeah, Detroit. drive on down. Well, I, I'm We're right having a watch here, party where, right over there. it is. You know, it's in Detroit. Yeah, so but you can I'm come here. tickets. <laughs> look, right here, you've got a ticket. It's uh, right over there. Oh, that, that does look, look like a comfy seat. See, I'm going to get up. <laughs> This, where this bottle is, we're going to move this bottle, and that's the spot for you. Oh, man. We're gonna, oh, we're gonna that turn is a nice this spot, couch, a corner seat. We're going to turn this couch around. you got a little armrest here. you got your own table right there. Ooh. You can watch it on that big-ass screen back there. It's bigger than it looks. Look, I'll stand next to it for context. Oh, this will help. I need, I need this some. This is great for viewers. Wow. That is wow, that, it's a really large tiny screen. Next to we're, that we're large talking screen. like five feet. Yeah, man. Like six, 144 inches. Oof. So anyway, yeah. So what they'll be watching on that is C9 versus TL mm -hmm. in the championship game. I think it's going to be a really good match. I think C9 is playing really well, and they showed it against what a lot of people considered was one of the hottest teams coming in in CLG. And I think the team that did the best for themselves was Clutch Gaming. Because they made fans everywhere by taking Team Liquid to five, and they played awesome. And it was they, they they were really fun to watch. And they used pocket picks. They didn't go with like straight meta, and um, it was it, it was it was a really enjoyable series. So if you haven't watched it and you didn't listen to my spoiler alert, I would suggest it because it it was it was really cool to watch. Okay. Um, so CG versus TL was 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 excellent. But, okay. So. 
just to set context, C9 and TL, by placing one and two, have already punched both of their tickets to go to Worlds. Like, yep. those will be two of our teams. They go. The third team is up for grabs amongst the remainder. And this, I think, is the, the, yeah, I think this is the first gauntlet that C9 is not in. That is, is that right? In like, yeah, in like four or five years. They usually yeah. make it by the skin of their teeth. So, in this gauntlet, the teams to watch are who? I, I, I really think Clutch Gaming looks dangerous after taking Team Liquid to five. They seem like they've really found their footing. Um, I really like the way Devontae's playing uh, mid. They, they, they play around him very well. Um, and Cody Sun has been excellent as an AD carry. Um, okay. So that's what you want right now is your, your carries popping off, right? So I think Clutch Gaming's really good. Um, I have a inherent distaste for CLG, so I don't like the organization. Um, so I hope they don't do well, but they have been playing excellently. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so so it's, it's going to be CG, CLG, TSM, and Fly, because of their performance in the first half, is going to get them into the gauntlet oh. as well, I believe. Right. So right, they're going to play a third place game between CG and CLG, and they'll be, I think, the gauntlet boss then. Okay, so like right now, is TSM at the bottom or is Fly? I think Fly. I think is, Fly's right? at the bottom. And okay. Then it's TSM. Because TSM is like a raging dumpster fire of a team right now. Is that pretty accurate? Like I know. I mean, that... what else? How else do you describe someone who dump who couldn't decide between two junglers all year and then throw them both away and bring in your academy jungler for the playoffs? So like, I, I don't. I don't know how else to explain that besides a raging dumpster fire. Yeah, I've been half-ass following kind of the drama that's been going on with Acadian, and everybody's like, what did they do with Acadian? And there's like all these weird fucking rumors that don't make a like whole Sven lot of sense. forced him out. Spin kicked him off the team. And they're, everybody's like, no, that didn't happen. He doesn't have the ability to do that. I was told by the coaching staff, not by Sven, that's bullshit. Which, again... You can never trust anything LCS players say about themselves or the organization because it is like the thing you do is toe the line with PC statements, right? It's death knell if you don't because other organizations are going to pick you up because then you're going to air their dirty line. So right. whether TSM treated Acadian like shit or not, he's not going to come out and say TSM treated me like shit unless he's planning on retiring because Plus he wants would, to go to yeah. play for another team. I mean, unless there's like a Dunzo manifesto or right. a, uh, what was the fucking uh, destroy the one jungler on Team Liquid documentary. Uh, <laughs> fucking Dardock you Yeah, Dardock. We went down to play. Yeah, whenever they did the Dardock you He's better than so many of the jugglers in the league, but he's... He's excommunicated himself, and that's that's, that's right. the whole point, right? Yeah. So I mean, unless you get one of those, people tend to toe the line, right? Yeah. Um, so don't trust any of that. But the the new drama, the new hotness in TSM drama is that apparently Acadian like cheated on his girlfriend, and that relationship exploded. And therefore, when the relationship went boom, so did his mental, and he's a very emotional player, and thus his performance, like, nosedived as a result of all the shit that was going on around him, and then they couldn't put in Grig, because they'd already committed to Acadian to, like, this is going to be the guy, because we like the way he plays with the team, and blah, 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 blah. So Grig's out, Acadian's in. Then Acadian's out because he's playing like shit. Then maybe we try Grig again. Nope, that's not working. Okay, let's try the other guy. Here comes Spica. Come uh, on, Spica. Uh, Spica, come on in. Get in here. And then uh, they've got Spica. And, of course, why not bring in an untested Academy player when you're in playoffs? It's curveball. No yeah, it's, see it <laughs> nobody will see it coming. <laughs> because it's fucking stupid. You know, like, okay, cool. <laughs> So, I mean, I, I, as far as I know, everything that I'm seeing, like Parth actually like wrote an answer to some of this and said, no, 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 this happened, this didn't happen, blah, 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 blah. And that was a lot of the Sven got rid of him stuff that didn't, apparently, I actually believe that probably wasn't true. They probably maybe not gotten along. And then a lot you, of people don't. Yeah, a lot of people don't. So, whatever. But, uh, you know, I don't see that it was like a, you were canned. 
kind of deal. I don't buy that. But the uh, the kind of neat thing is that I've never seen TSM in this kind of swirling chaos, and I have no idea how they're going to recover. I don't know that they have time to recover this year. Yeah, and it's going to be harder to recover now because other organizations are stepping up. You know, like, it's not like before when you had three or four organizations that were good and then six trash heaps, right? That mm-hmm. weren't really prepared. These are legit organizations that have paid a shit ton of money, have, you know, like good facilities, good coaches. And Racist so, investors. You, you got it all, you know? Like, yeah, they run the game. Yeah, um, Yeah, I guess except for Echo Fox right now. They're kind of a, they're kind of a trash heap. You know? Well, like, and that's yeah. what's fucked really up fucked up is... Fox. He's a goddamn gem. I mean, usually you see, like, these teams that are going through, like, restructuring just die, right? Like, they have huge problems. Dude, that's Clutch right now. Clutch Gaming will be Dignitas next split. Yep. They won't be Clutch Gaming anymore. They'll be Dignitas with new investment, new blah, blah, blah. And yet it doesn't seem to affect the bottom line. Like, Honestly, I think as long as the entity is stable and pays its bills, the players could give a shit. Agreed. Is kind of what they're I... Getting their, they're getting their paycheck, and they're trying to compete, right? So as mm-hmm. long as they're getting um, the help that they need to do those two things, then then they're good. But I, I think I think TSM... You know, like I, I've, I've never been like a TSM fanboy. I've always been more of a C9 fan, so I've always been rooting a little bit against TSM in that sense. But I still like it when they're good because it's, it's usually good for the league. But it, I think it will be harder for them to come back from this. I mean, they've had down splits before, and obviously they still finished in the playoffs in these splits. But just like you said, the swirling dumpster fire that's currently around their organization, I, I don't think is a good look going into next season. So they're going to have to well, I don't think it's a good. I don't think it's a good look or a stable look going into Worlds. I don't see how you could transition, even if you manage to like win the gauntlet. Win the gauntlet by a miracle. How are you going to ride that momentum? Into... That'd be like having a hundred thieves in there, like last year. Well, right. Like, how are you going to do <laughs> you it? Just have a throwaway team, right? And it's like, yeah, like hundred thieves was fucking awful to oh, watch. So so tough. And I mean, so, like, yeah. yeah, that just kind of like burned their fan base too. And I can't imagine it would even be good for TSM to qualify for Worlds right now because all you would do is piss off your fans for you going and an failing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like, they I, that's already TSM's rep, is like, we choke at Worlds, which, okay, I mean, to a certain degree, I suppose that's fair. But, like, well, okay, it's definitely fair when they had, like, the fucking red carpet laid out for them a couple of years <laughs> ago or whatever, and they could, couldn't bring it together, but... They had, like, the easiest group they could have yeah, possibly but, helped for. And then, yeah, but, I mean, Worlds is still fucking Worlds. So, still Worlds, yeah. Yeah, like, I give somebody a break when they have an off tournament and whatever. Like, it just sucks because it's, like, the culmination of your year into yeah. an off tournament. And so, but I think people are really harsh about that crap. But, yeah, TSM's kind of like a perennial underperformer at Worlds. And I don't think their fan base will ever forgive them if they shit the bed this year. If they went. Yeah. So I don't but think I, I, there's like a win out of the, unless you just go and dominate worlds and somehow manage to like get out of the first round. That would be <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be outstanding. But apparently, I wasted all of my time talking about NA. So I encourage everyone to watch. Uh, no, no, we're going to talk about NBA. EU. We can go long. That's not a problem. This is quality. People might enjoy this. So let's, we don't ever talk about the LCS anyway. So EU. EU. What's the take? Uh, the take is is currently in like the top ten rankings. They they have Fnatic, G two, and Splice. This is worldwide. This is what they have right now. This is ESPN's rankings. So take that for what it is. But that's what they're saying right now is that Splice, who's had a really good split, um, they're saying that they're like a top ten team in the league. So it'll be really interesting. They're playing um, uh, Rogue tomorrow. Um, and that's the first round matchup for them. 
and G2 and Fnatic have the buys. Um, and then the Vitality is playing... Oh, I'm blanking now on the other the other team that's in. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how Splice performs. Um, I think we know that G2 is stalwart. They can pull up troll comps, and it's kind of fun to watch, and also kind of annoying to watch as they play, like, Soraka top. Um, just because they can. Um, so. That's why I like G2. <laughs> exactly. Cause they, cause it's, they that's my shit, it. man. Yeah. Um, bring, it, bring a support into solo lane and fuck with people. That's but they can awesome. do that shit because they have the skill to do it. And uh, I think Fnatic showed that they came back really strong this split. That, you know, they beat G2 once. Um, they're, they're also a team to be reckoned with. Um, so I think, I think EU's in a better spot right now than NA. Um, but... They're both really fun tournaments to watch, uh, so um, I'm looking forward to forward to EU. It'll and, and I'm also interested to see how Splice performs to see if they can live up to this like standard that's been set for them. But everyone's on um, the European teams because it's in Europe this year, right? Worlds is. Yeah, yeah. It's supposedly so, isn't it in like Athens or something. Yeah, so it'll be really interesting because I think that'll create a really awesome atmosphere for them with G2 coming off of. You know, MSI and uh, Fnatic and G2 obviously did really well in Worlds last year. So um, they got a lot of momentum. They got a lot of good teams. They got really fun play that that, that they do. Um, it's not it's not some stale, boring meta in EU. You always got something interesting popping out. Okay, so this is interesting. I am flipping through the summer split power rankings for the most recent go, which is August thirteenth. All right, number one is G two. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean they've been really good. I they are strong. That's yeah, they won MSI. So. I hate them, but whatever. <laughs> uh, two fun plus Phoenix from the LPL. PX, go watch them play. Doinby is so much fun. He picks whatever that he had played eighteen different champs this year. Mid eighteen different champs. He plays crazy shit. He'll play his rumble. He'll play. He plays all sorts of stuff, and he's insane. It's so much fun to watch him play. Okay, <laughs> RNG. Well, yeah, number everyone three. knows RNG. Okay. They're like fifth in LPL right now in their their rankings. That shows where. Really, they're like eleven and two. They're eleven and five, I think. Because um, huh. FPX and top sports are or top esports are above them, I know. Okay. Yeah, so they're third. Yeah, I think they're third. Okay, so that's Royal Never Give Up, and then top esports in the LPL. Yep. Okay, so that's three Chinese teams right away. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Europe is number one, then China, 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 then Fnatic, so back to Europe, Europe. Again. then Griffin from the LCK. Which is also a fun team to watch. There's someone who will mix up their picks a lot. They don't, they, they, unlike previous Korean teams, both them, DWG, Damwon Gaming, and uh, Sandbox, they're all teams that'll mix up. They're not, they're not, they're not trying to go to play some boring like, you know, we're gonna wait till 40 minutes when one team fight and take you out. No, they're they're looking to mix it up. So it's 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 more interesting than Korean play has been. In my, in my opinion, viewing in a while. Interesting. Okay. Number seven, Splice. See? There they are. That shocks me, honestly. That, <laughs> it really does it, shock me. It is. So, okay. <coughs> Hopefully Splice picks Europe's third seed then. SKT1 is eighth. Yep. And they're, they're actually at the bottom of uh, the playoffs right now. And spoiler alert, uh, they beat a Freak of Freaks in the first match, which was disappointing for me because I always root for the Freaks. Um, but they beat them 2-1, and now they're going up against Damwon Gaming tomorrow. Interesting. Okay. Sandbox Gaming. They're cool. They're, they're fun to watch. Okay. Uh, I've never... I don't really catch up with the LCK, so that's, you know, I have no idea. So what the, what's really is. interesting is DWG, Sandbox, and Griff were all not in the main league a year and a half ago. They all have been through promotion series. 
So oh, they, really? So that's so they're, they're all like rooting for each other. They would love for all these like recent promotions to go to Worlds together. Um, and they say because they're changing up the Korean style. Hmm. So that's why you haven't heard of them before because they haven't been anywhere. They've been in the lower leagues. Okay. So then number 10, Team Liquid. We're in there, baby. We made it. We made the top 10. So Team Liquid. Honorable mentions, uh, Cloud9, 14th. Yeah. I so, think that's about right. Because Cloud9 always plays up, right? They, they play higher than their lot when they go to Worlds, right? Mm -hmm. They always come in as like someone who's lost a few games in NA and no one's quite sure. But they really put their shit together when they go through that Korean boot camp and then they come out in Worlds firing normally. CLG is ranked at 19th in the world by ESPN. Uh, the next NA team, oof. <laughs> there isn't one. <laughs> no. That's it. We're we done. done. Boys. And it goes was, to, for the record, it goes to 44 places. And before CG took Team Liquid to five. So. Yeah, and keep in mind, in 44th place is the Gen Air Green Wings, who went 0 17. <laughs> so that's kind of how they feel about the rest of NA, for the yeah. record. The 0 and 17 Korean team could be to everyone else in NA. <laughs> everyone else in NA, which I don't think that's necessarily fair with Clutch. It like, kind of surprised everybody, and they seem like they may have some gas in the tank, but like, uh, yeah, they're not on the list right here. Origin is. Origin's at 23rd. Uh, Schalke is at 15th. I like Schalke. But, uh, upset for their, their AD carry is, is sick. SK so, Gaming is, is 29th. AHQ is 32nd. But these are like kind of names that I would recognize. Misfits right. is 39th. And that's about it. Uh, OMG from China is 42nd. What happened? 2 and 12? Yeah, they've really fallen off. <laughs> yeah, apparently. But, uh, yeah, so that that's interesting. Man, the scene has changed so much since last year. Like, all the major players are different. Yeah, it's really flipped up. I mean, that's what happens when you have a young guy's lead, right? When a lot of your players are 17 to 21, and people mm. pop up real quick. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty excited about this. And, you know, it'll be awesome watching it right back there with my best buddies. I'm going to see if I can get Brad to come, too. <laughs> going to get Brad to come. Who knows? Maybe I'll get Ponderous to show up. He drove down here once. <coughs> so, That'll be a hell of a drive, right? Well, it's only like uh, 10 hours or something oh, like bad. that. It's not too bad. But, I mean, yours yeah, is actually, uh, he is in San Antonio. So he has to come up. But. I gotcha. But yeah, hopefully we can do that. Because what I would like to do is set this all up and, you know, stream worlds of us watching worlds. So, like, watch worlds with us kind of scenario. And, like, yeah, it'd be fun. put the camera over there, uh, point it down, and then just kind of watch what's going on. I, I think, think that, that would be, be a good time. So, hopefully we can get that done. And we can do it like Mystery Science Theater style. With just, our oh, with just silhouettes. And then <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. yeah, why not? That would be cool. So, but yeah, the other thing is, like I said, I was hoping that I think the podcast is pretty financially stabilized for the most part, though we have had an alarming amount of Patreon withdrawals lately. So, like, to the tune of net 10 or 15%, which is... Yee, making me nervous. Uh, but if we kind of keep on the clip that we're on and we generate any kind of money, um, I've done stuff like to give back to the community as is. You know, that's fine. We've bought better equipment. Like you can see Danger's face. Um, you know, so I mean, we, we've done stuff like that. And I don't mind to continue doing stuff like that, but I think the podcast is pretty set for like technical things and we've paid our website and we've got Squadcast now for audio quality and things like that. And so now if I do acquire anything out of this, 
right? If, if I do end up you know, generating any kind of real money to speak of, I would like to, like, give back to these guys, right? Just these two. Everybody else is a piece of shit on this podcast. <laughs> no, <But> no honor. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I would like to give back to the guys that actually donate their time and do something fun for everybody, like go to Worlds and like rent a and b or something. And then like if you just get there, then we'll, yeah, I'll cover your, you know, I'll cover your B&B with podcast money or something like that. Because like, dude, I've been doing this podcast for fucking five or six years now. And I feel like those were the best times like those were the times they kind of made the whole thing worth it and all the weeks and and the recordings and the lack of planning you know (laughs) all all that stuff uh was made worth it whenever you got to actually like hang out as a group and do fun stuff and i want to be able to do that for everybody and like if the community sees it fit to give back to them so i can that would be super cool like that's my goal and you know i know that's like originally we talked about uh doing like a video editor and stuff that's fallen through i can't get any source material i can't find anybody that wants to do it and so it's kind of hard to generate stuff like that without actively trying to so honestly i would just like to give back to my friends and i think that would be a nice goal of something that is realistic that we could do if you guys, or you know, get Astros an ass tattoo. I still think that would be funny, okay, but, but that's gonna bring in money. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the bait. <laughs> that's that's, that that's, that that's the worm exactly on the hook. How that works. But no, if, if we could really generate something worm like that, hook. I think that would be an amazing gift to be able to give to these guys that devote their time every week, and I, I think that would be pretty cool. So that's my goal. That's what I'm gonna shoot for. I know that you know, as a Patreon reward, that's not much be like hey give me a gift or give me the ability to give these guys a gift but it's genuine and it's real and i think that's i think they deserve it so if you guys find it in your heart to come hang out with us yeah you guys find it in your heart to re-support the podcast financially or bring (laughs) up that 10 15 percent that i'm desperately worried about that would be fantastic and uh if you can't then just shoot us reviews so we grow i'd really appreciate it yeah Reviews would be great. Okay. With that, uh, I think we'll wrap it up here. We're a little bit over time, but that's fine. You get bonus content this week. All right. (laughs) Do we have any events, anything else we want to talk about before we go? No. I'll be organizing a tournament soon, but uh, that will be posted in the Discord in the announcements page, so you can learn about it there. Cool, cool. And by the way, the Discord is growing. The community is still happening, still growing. Uh, community games have been a thing that people have been asking me about lately I would love feedback from people because community games tend to go like peaks and valleys of attendance and it's summer right now I think when win- fall and winter picks back up we'll start organizing a little bit more around community games and well, you like need um, community games to play show up in discord and there's that- usually someone around and you can pick up and all of a sudden, Every we'll night invite, there's people around to play. That we'll invite is not three a people, and you'll have a five-person game just like that. Yeah. And you'll have a well, game. and that, that's the thing. is like Community games was originally like time we set aside to play with the community. Now everybody on the show pretty much plays with the community if we're there. Like We sit around and go, who wants to play? And we drag everybody into a game on more or less every night of the week. Yeah. So I don't really... The need... For community games, like the need to <laughs> contact and touch our community base is not really there, with the exception of maybe some uh, rapey Big Bird stuff. That, right. that dude's always touching the community. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> We're ending there. Good night, everybody. There we go.